Welcome to Tech Rewind, the series where we take a look at devices from the past to see if they're still worth your hard-earned cash. I'm your host, Mark Spurl, and today is all about this little guy, the iPhone 12 mini. Despite its tiny little frame, it made a huge impression on us tech folks when it released two years ago, but has it survived the test of time or should you completely avoid this thing at all costs? Let's find out. It's time for Tech Rewind. All right, here's how this works. I'm gonna put 10 categories on the board. Each category is worth 10 points. If the 12 mini earns 70 points or higher, it'll get my stamp of approval and you should consider buying it. However, if it doesn't get at least 70 points, you should probably move on and find something else. The first category is design, and I don't know about you guys, but I still think the 12 mini is an absolutely beautiful phone. We've got flat edges all the way around, reminiscent of those old iPhone 4s and 5s, and this really clean backplate with the Apple logo in the center, and then the camera are just contained in a little bump on the back. The buttons are solid, they're nice and clicky, it retains the mute switch that everybody loves, and I even like the color choices for this phone. This minty green is really classy. I'll tell you what though, there's just no way that I can give any phone a 10 in the design category when it's got a forehead like Stewie Griffin. I love that it has symmetrical bezels around the, the rest of the display, but yeah, the notch definitely knocks it down a peg. Next up is durability, so it's time to smack the crap out of this glass sandwich with a couple of drop tests. But just before we do that, we should give it a dunk in some water. Apple claims this phone is IP68 rated for water and dust, so it's supposed to be able to sit at the bottom of a pool six meters or almost 20 feet deep for half an hour. That means our half an hour dunk in a few inches of water shouldn't be enough to make it sweat. No problemo, says the iPhone 12 mini after its 30 minute bath. So I'm gonna drop it at a height of three and six feet to show it who's boss. That is what I would call a success. No scratches, no cracks, so we're moving on. Display is the next category, and this is an interesting one. On the one hand, this 5.4 inch 1080p display is what Apple calls Super Retina XDR OLED, which is another fancy way of saying, ooh, pretty colors and high contrast. Seriously though, for a tiny display like this one, it does look really, really nice. And it gets really bright too, up to a peak of like 1200 nits with HDR. But on the other hand, this display is a little disappointing for one simple reason. It runs at 60 Hertz. It's a little bit slower feeling than most displays these days that run at 120 Hertz. And you'll probably feel that if you're doing some gaming on it too. Still though, if you're not bothered by that or the massive notch that cuts into your already somewhat small screen real estate when you're watching videos, you'll be pretty happy with the front side of this phone. How about the speakers? Surely that huge notch means big sound from the speaker inside of it, right? Eh, not really. There's a speaker here in the notch and then there's one at the bottom, so there's some stereo separation there from the two different channels but neither of the speakers get very loud and there's almost zero bass coming from them. It'll work just fine if you're watching, you know, a quick YouTube video or something, but don't expect to have your socks blown off. Category five is performance, and here's where things get a little bit tricky. As many of you know, Apple makes their own internal hardware instead of relying on companies like Qualcomm for their CPUs. Inside, we've got the Apple A14 Bionic, the same powerful chip that you'd find on the much more expensive iPhone 12 Pro Max. As expected, the phone performed very well in synthetic tests like Geekbench 6. I also didn't have issues switching between apps or scrolling social media or anything like that. It was pretty much a lag-free experience. It's also good to have a chip like that in this phone long-term too, because as it ages, it's not gonna slow down nearly as fast as phones with a more mid-range or budget-oriented chip. There is a problem with putting a high-performance chip in a small phone like this though. When doing some more intensive things or even just watching 4K video with the screen brightness all the way up, this phone got pretty darn hot in the hands. In fact, it actually got hotter at times than the Samsung S21 with its plastic back that we tested last time on Tech Rewind. 
The next category is something that Apple always does extremely well, and that is software updates. It's not something that a lot of people think about when they consider buying a used phone, but it's very important, especially for the fact that phones can actually improve significantly over time with software updates. Apple leads the industry in longevity, and that's no different here. The 12 mini is expected to receive major iOS updates until 2027, giving it four more years of software updates, which is a perfect 10 on my software update score sheet. It's camera time. Everybody loves to talk about a smartphone's camera quality. The iPhone 12 mini has three cameras in total. There's a 12 megapixel front facing camera and two 12 megapixel cameras in the rear, one with a standard focal length and one with an ultra wide focal length. There's no telephoto camera on this phone. So shots from far away subjects can be a little bit tough to get, but when you're up close, you can take some awesome pictures with this phone. The 12 mini has good color and sharpness all the way around, despite Apple sticking to that 12 megapixel sensor instead of opting for something more high res. Portrait mode shots look pretty nice overall with some minor issues with edge blurring. And although the ultra wide camera doesn't have autofocus like the newer iPhones, I still really like the pictures that I can get with this phone. And hey, if you're liking this video, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. The photos aren't the best part of this camera system in my opinion though. That remains with the video side of things. Apple has been the king of video recording for a while. And although some other brands have gotten really close in recent years, their color balance and overall image quality remains the best. I would have no problem using this phone for vlogging for YouTube or just capturing some family moments, as long as the battery lasts, that is. And that's what we're gonna talk about next, battery life. This is a small phone with an even smaller battery. We're talking like 2200 milliamp hours. Just for reference, the Asus Zenfone 10, which is only a little bit bigger at 5.9 inches, has a 4300 milliamp hour battery. Needless to say, battery life was something I was worried about. Putting it through my standardized battery test, it finished with 24% remaining, which in fairness is better than I thought it would do. Over the past couple of weeks of testing, I averaged a screen on time of just shy of four hours, and I was putting the phone on the charger with less than five or 10% left every night. It's also worthwhile to note that this is basically a brand new iPhone 12 mini with very little use considering it still has 100% battery health remaining. So as this phone wears down and gets some charging cycles put through it, this battery is only gonna get worse over time. We're down to the wire now with our ninth category, charging. Quick little note here, I actually changed the way I'm evaluating charging speed from the way I did it last time. So if you watched last video about the S21's unfair evaluation in that category, don't worry, I know, I fixed it here. Now the cool thing about the iPhone 12 mini is that it has MagSafe, which I still think is one of my favorite ways to charge a phone. If you have a MagSafe charger, the phone will magnetically snap to the charger and begin wireless charging at up to 15 watts. There's a ton of MagSafe accessories available from wallets to tripod mounts, and they're actually really useful. So the iPhone 12 mini definitely earns a little bit of points there. However, it still has a lightning port and it actually charges very slowly from that lightning port, even though we have a pretty small battery. It took almost an hour and 40 minutes to fully charge from dead, which really isn't great at all. I will give it an extra point for MagSafe since it's so cool and useful, but it's still pretty mediocre in that charging category. The final category, this is the most important one, value. The iPhone 12 mini released with an MSRP of 699 US doubloons for the base model with 64 gigs of storage, which by the way, really is not enough storage anymore. And you should probably try to get a model with more storage if you can. Nowadays, you can get the 12 mini for cheaper on the used market, but it's still not quite as cheap as I was hoping. It ranges anywhere from 300 to 375 US dollars on eBay, depending on the condition and how much storage it has. That actually brings it within the used pricing range of the Samsung S21 Ultra, a phone that is easily one of the best phones to release that year and will absolutely destroy the 12 mini in terms of battery life and display quality. But then again, the 12 mini will receive a few more years of software updates than the S21 Ultra will. So there's that to consider too. That brings our final score to 69 for the iPhone 12 mini. It came so, so close to our critical number 70, but just fell short in a few important areas. If you have a recommendation for which phone I should test on Tech Rewind next, let me know in a comment down below. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day.